Now, live from your local news source, this is ABC 27 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Cromwell. The dust continues to settle on yesterday's Pennsylvania primary election and the November matchups are now set. There will be interesting matchups in the statewide row office races. Our Dennis Owens following all of it for us. He joins us with more. Did you get any sleep, Dennis? I got a little, but this is a great time <laughs> of year. We no sooner get done with one election and guys like me and the Pennsylvania political classes immediately start thinking about the next election, which for the record, November 5th and there will be an open seat for attorney general. And the showdown has a York County flair. York DA Dave Sunday will take on former York State Representative and former Auditor General Eugene D. Pasquale, seeking to be the state's top law enforcement officer. Sunday had the statewide Republican Party endorsement, and that mattered as he cruised to victory in the GOP primary over suburban Philly State Rep Craig Williams. He celebrated last night in York and said he hopes to return the seat to Republican hands. The GOP once dominated the AG's office, but has lost the last several elections. Sunday concedes the statewide endorsement was a big help. But that being said, I mean, I campaigned all throughout Pennsylvania. I mean, I drove to almost every single county, spoke everywhere, and it was an amazing experience because it put me in a position to really listen to what, what people are concerned about. So in the last 10, 15 years, you've had my self-elected Auditor General now being the Attorney General nominee. Certainly have Dave Sunday, John Fetterman with your county roots, Tom Wolf as the governor, Scott Wagner was his opponent. Um, there, you know, who knows what's in that Canoris Creek. Something in the water down there in York County. The race for Auditor General will be two African-American men. Republican Tim DeFore of Dauphin County is the incumbent. Philadelphia State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta won the Democratic primary handily. He previously ran for U.S. Senate, you may recall. And it will be two women squaring off for state treasurer. Republican Stacey Garrity is the incumbent. Western PA small businesswoman Erin McClellan may have pulled off the biggest upset of the night. She defeated State Representative Ryan Bizarro, who was endorsed by statewide Democrats, uh, but to no avail. McClellan, McClellan won handily. And we should note both Ryan Bizarro and Craig Williams, who lost their primaries for statewide office, both won their primaries to keep their state house seats, so their political careers certainly not over. All right, Dennis, I, the, the more I watch politics, you know, the more the rules are just thrown out the window. You have a tale of two things here. You have the attorney general's race where the Republican back candidate wins. Yes. Yeah. Then you have the treasurer's race where the Democratic back candidate loses. Bill Clinton once said uh, Republicans like to fall in line, Democrats like to fall in love. So Republicans follow the rules. The statewide party says vote for this guy. I think that certainly mattered for him. Uh, still not quite sure what happened with State Representative Ryan Bazaar. Remember, he was running TV ads talking about Stacey Garrity as if right. the, he didn't even have a primary opponent. Not only did he have one, he had one that was more formidable for uh, him to beat. So that, that's one that the, uh, uh, the analysts are going to really be looking into as to exactly what happened in that one. But we've got some interesting races again November 5th, but the good news for you is we won't be seeing any uh, TV ads for a while. We can take a deep <laughs> breath. Uh, yes. and, and, and chill for a little bit. but Just, uh, just a little bit. Just a little because bit, because this is a huge race, and yes. even like the attorney general's race in the state, there's going to be outside money and outside interest pouring in on exactly. that one as well. So we'll get a break from the ads for a little bit. It's, uh, it's our Employee Protection Act, James. Yes, oh, absolutely. <laughs> all right, Dennis, thank you very much for bringing us up to yep. on all that. We look forward to seeing those interesting matchups coming up this fall. Okay, well, another big race that will get national attention this fall is for Congress. The matchup for the 10th Congressional District is now clear. Six Democrats were in the race in hopes of unseating incumbent Republican Scott Perry. The race has been called for former TV news anchor Janelle Stelson. You can see there are 44% of the vote. She's followed by Mike O'Brien, Shemaine Daniels, Rick Copeland, Blake Lynch, and John Broadhurst. With over 98% of the precincts reporting Stelson walking away with about 44% of that vote. She's won the Democratic nomination, meaning she will take on Scott Perry in November. Stelson could not vote for herself because she does not live in this district right now. She lives in Lancaster County. Last month at our ABC 27 debate, Dennis Owens had asked you if you would move to our district if you won the primary. You said yes. Is that still the case today? I am looking forward to what the future brings on this front. Uh, for me, I've lived in four places in Dauphin County, three of them in Harrisburg, one in Susquehanna Township, lived in two places in Cumberland County, New Cumberland and Camp Hill. So there is not a candidate in this race that knows this area better than me. But will you move to the 10th district now? Yeah. You will. Yeah, I said I will. 
Congressman Perry also releasing a statement calling Stelson a radical leftist. Stelson told ABC 27 if elected, she is committed to working with both Republicans and Democrats. All right, two of the biggest races for Pennsylvania in November are now set for U.S. Senate. Incumbent Bob Casey being challenged by Republican and former hedge fund CEO Dave McCormick. This is considered one of the pivotal Senate contests that will help decide the balance of power in the Senate. And the race for president is set, but Pennsylvanians still voted in the top race yesterday. Look here, though. Nikki Haley was still on the Republican ballot. Even though she suspended her campaign, she received well over 156,000 votes. On the Democratic side, Joe Biden getting 93%. Turning to a big state Senate race, Republican incumbent State Senator John DeSanto, who represents the 15th district in Dauphin County, decided not to run for reelection in the Republican primary. It was Nick DeFrancesco, former county commissioner and current county treasurer, defeating American Legion commander Ken Stamball, who was endorsed by the county GOP. DeFrancesco angered some Republicans because he decided to run after they endorse Stamball, but you can see there, DeFrancesco wins. In the Democratic primary, current state rep Patty Kim defeats Alvin Q. Taylor, so it'll be DeFrancesco and Kim vying for that Senate seat in November. Democrats, though, are confident that they'll be able to flip that seat and narrow the GOP's lead in the upper chamber. Speaking of Patty Kim, she gave up her state House seat to run for Senate. Five Democrats competed for her House seat. They all debated right here a month ago. Nathan Davidson is the winner with nearly 30% of the vote, followed by Mercedes Evans, Tina Nixon, Jesse Minoski, and Laura Harding. Representative Dawn Kiefer gave up her Dillsburg House seat to run for Senate as well. Five fellow Republicans ran for her job in the House. Mark Anderson is the winner here with 37% of the vote, followed by Zachary Kyle, Holly Kelly, Chris Wyatt, and Matthew Davis. Sarah Wilson will have more from the winner. We'll hear from him coming up in our next half hour. ABC 27, your local election headquarters, will have more results in our next half hour, and you can check the numbers anytime on ABC27.com and on the ABC 27 app.